Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to test and diagnose a manifold absolute pressure sensor on this Honda Civic 9th generation from 2014. It has a 1.4 liter 4 cylinder engine. Also, I will try to explain in simple words how the MAP sensor works so that you can diagnose easier any trouble codes related to the air measuring sensor on your engine. As you might know, the manifold absolute pressure sensor is measuring the pressure inside the intake manifold. This information will be used together with the mass airflow sensor and the throttle position sensor to determine how much fuel to spray into the cylinders, but also it will use the data as a point of reference to double check if the values given by the other sensors are correct. And this is the point where the things can go complex. So let's say for example the throttle position sensor or the flap is opened at 15% and it allows let's say 100 grams of air per second through the intake hose right here where the MAF sensor is located and with these values the manifold absolute pressure sensor will read around 60 kilopascals. The computer will already know that if the mass airflow sensor reads 100 grams of air passing through the diameter of this intake hose then the manifold absolute pressure sensor should be 60 kilopascals. This is a number I invented, but let's go with this number, 60 kilopascals. Now, how does the PCM know that? Well, because it is calibrated with the mathematical equation, which will include the diameter of the hose of the intake, where the mass airflow sensor is located. Also, the mass airflow sensor voltage signal, which is sended when the air passes through those hot wires. Now, let's say, the computer will see a correct correlation between the MAP sensor and the MAP sensor, but the throttle position sensor is sending signal that it's open 20% instead of 15. Then the computer will expect more air to be read by the mass airflow sensor and more pressure to be read by the manifold absolute pressure sensor if it will be the situation that the throttle body reads correct value. Therefore, the PCM will agree that the throttle body is wrong because there are two sensors which are interpreted as being correct and within specs against one sensor which is wrong, the throttle body position sensor. But now the most tricky part is that even by knowing all this, you as a human, you cannot rely only on what the scanner says or the trouble code says because the codes which trigger the issue can be totally somewhere else. Like for example, if the throttle body is partially clogged with carbon around the edges, then the signal to the PCM is going to be within spec, the signal of the throttle body position sensor, and the air passing through the throttle body will allow the pressure to change normally under the variation of the engine RPMs, but there is still going to be a problem because the airflow measured by the MAF sensor is not going to be within spec because of the obstruction by the throttle body flap. So the computer is most likely to throw a code for the mass airflow sensor circuit low, for example, when in reality the throttle body is the one with the issue on it and the one which caused the issue. So I hope you can see a little bit the fundamentals of how these sensors are related to each other so you can use them in your advantage when diagnosing a trouble code. Also notice that there can be many possible codes for one same issue. For example, if there is a crack into the intake hose, it's a big difference if it's located before the throttle body or after the throttle body. Or like if you have a crack near the injectors, the oxygen sensor will read lean, the mass airflow sensor and the throttle body will read normal values and the MAP sensor will also still be able to read correct values related to the other sensors because the crack is not open that much when the car idles but just when accelerating since the engine vibrates more and opens the crack more. And if the car is an acceleration, the MAP sensor is not used as a main information provider. And therefore, no codes on the MAP sensor or any other air sensor. So in this situation, what you're going to do when there is an oxygen sensor lean condition code? You will need to test them all, all the sensors, and see if they are clogged or if they respond to the change of the air condition or like the air state like temperature pressure and flow also do a test with the gasoline or propane around the area where you suspect the crack 
and watch how the oxygen sensor reacts. You can notice from this example that even excessive engine vibration caused by bad engine mounts can trigger codes on almost any air measuring sensors on the engine, especially if the vibrations are going on for a long time. With that being said, let's have a look on how to test the manifold absolute pressure sensor on this car. To do that, with a screwdriver in cross, I'm going to open the sensor. Let's hold it on by just one bolt. For this test, I'm going to use both a scan tool and a voltmeter. Of course, the, the scan tool is going to be much more precise and clear to see on the graph how the sensor reacts under air pressure change, which I'm going to do with this vacuum pump. The most accurate test is going to be when the engine is on and then you induce the variation of the pressure into the intake by changing the rotation per minute of the engine. When it idles, the pressure is low, high vacuum. When it accelerates, less vacuum and more like atmospheric pressure or even above that in some uh, turbocharged cars. So in order to connect my scan tool, I'm going to place the key in the second position. On this OBD2 port, you got to connect your scan tool. Here I've got the live data on the scanner of the, you need to look for intake manifold absolute pressure, not for the barometric pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and probe these wires. The voltmeter is set to 20 volts. You've got three wires. The middle one is the ground and the red wire from this side is the signal wire. Now, when I apply vacuum, you should see a change in the diagram and the voltage. The voltage should increase and the pressure should decrease. We've got 2.6 volts on the graph. You can see how it gets lower. 56 kilopascals, 44 kilopascals, 3.62 volts. Now I'm going to start the engine and you will see what the value should be when the engine is on idling. As you can see, it's around 28 kilopascals. If I increase the RPM, the mass airflow rate will also increase. The intake manifold pressure will also increase. But you can notice when I decelerate, the intake manifold pressure is going to be lower than it is right now. So let's see, I accelerate now. And you can see when it decelerates, it's around 17 kilopascals. And that can be also an easy method to detect if you have any crack into the intake because if you have that crack then the intake will not be able to keep that vacuum when decelerates because that's going to be the maximum level of vacuum you can get so that's going to be the maximum stress which is going to be on that crack all right guys that was it i hope this information will be helpful for you in the future if you like this video and you want to see more stuff like that hit that subscribe button and until next time drive safe and i will see you soon